Hey everyone, it's Rushni and I am back with video number six and the final video in my Spina Bifida Awareness Month series. Yeah, I can't believe that I've actually gotten all these videos out and gotten them out in October. I feel like it's a huge accomplishment for me because it's a really, really busy month <clears throat> and just a busy life for me in general. So anyway, if you have not watched the previous videos, I'll link them right here on the screen. And they'll be also down below this video in the description box. Definitely go ahead and watch them, catch up, and then come back to this video because I'm going to just pick up where I left off. Daily care of my son is pretty easy for me, I guess because it's all I know. He sleeps pretty late, thank you God, and he sleeps perfectly fine through the night. And so I just let him wake up. Um, when he wakes up unless we have a therapy session and then I'll wake him up and I get him ready um, bring him downstairs feed him and then most of the morning he's either playing or a therapist may come in the morning depending on what day of the week it is um, or we have um, like different things we have to do with him kind of for therapy on our own like right now he gets cranky and he goes to sleep at nap time and his nap time is kind of late because he's a late riser and then same thing, we wake up in the evening and we just he just pretty much plays most of the evening. Um, we may go do something, we may run errands. It's really simple. Like I said, he has a set bedtime and I take him to bed. He has a AFO, which is an ankle foot orthotic, excuse me, and it's um, on one of his legs. I put that on when I wake him up in the morning and he wears that all day. And at night, he also has a double AFO with like a bar, it's called a Dobbs bar. Um, that we put him to sleep in to make sure that his feet are positioned in the right way. So when he first came home, it was a whole lot harder because we had to do um, a lot more wound care on his different wounds. He had several wounds, two on his head, two on his abdomen, one on his back um, that we had to tend to. And the one on his back was pretty sizable and we had to do a lot of um, removing the dressings and redressing it and all that kind of stuff. And we couldn't give him a bath so we kind of had to sponge him down. And then of course, if poo got near his wound, it was a whole big debacle we had to clean. And there were a whole lot more doctor's appointments. When he gets older, it may become more challenging because at this point, his mobility is not as big of an issue it's because at this point, he probably would be toddling. He'd be walking around and I'd be able to put him down. And that's the biggest issue I have right now. I can't really go out in public and put him down like you'd put a kid down I have to carry him all the time but at home I just put him down and it's a free-for-all so yeah um, but when he gets older obviously I can't pick up a big kid and walk around with him so there will be some mobility or adaptive devices and those things may make it a little bit more difficult I really feel sometimes like it's God's grace that this is all I know because I kind of don't know what I'm missing. I think that if my husband and I actually had another child after this and the child was born with no issues, that would bring up a lot of emotions because it would make me realize, oh, this is what was supposed to be happening and this is when this was supposed to be happening. You know, and even though I can compare him sort of to other people's children, I do my best not to. I find that ignorance really is bliss. Um, and peace. Before I even found out about my son's diagnosis, I was dealing, struggling with really, really bad depression in the beginning part of my pregnancy. Um, and then of course I get this news. And so this does not exactly make you feel better, but I made a decision back then that I could not allow myself to go off the deep end because this would, that would have been a deep end I could not have recovered from. And I think looking back on it, what I ended up doing was kind of just going into autopilot. It was like survival mode. And truthfully, you guys, God carried me because I was in survival mode, like focus, keep myself healthy, keep the baby healthy mode through the end of my entire pregnancy and probably through the whole beginning of his first year of life. You don't know what you are able or capable of doing when you have no other choice. There was no other choice. I didn't have an opportunity to mourn anything or to take time to let stuff settle in. I immediately found out information and I had to be moved to action. And so I kind of skipped the processing part. And it wasn't until later on after he was born that I got to start processing. And I'm still processing some of these things. I've actually been doing okay. I have had some really low dips. And actually recently 
I had a really, really low dip probably about a month ago. Um, and it's hard because, you know, I still have to care for my son. I still have to go to doctor's appointments. I can't just check out and sleep for days on end. I have to get up. I have to move. And so in, in a way that kind of helps, um, I have been doing some stuff to manage my depression like I usually do. And I share that in my stomp on depression's head series. And I have another one coming up after this, but I want to get these videos out, but it has not been, it has not been easy, you guys. And I mean, I know I get on the videos and I know it just seems like, oh, Rushni seems like she's perfectly fine. Well, of course, I'm not going to film the lowest low, the crying fits, the, you know, the meltdown. I'm not going to film that, but trust me, there are crying fits and there are meltdowns because you do not want to see your child struggle. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's a different kind of difficult part of me, um, derived strength from his strength in a way. And part of me realizes that I have to be and do better with myself because I have to be a better mom for him. My husband and I are a lot closer now that this has happened. Um, our marriage is not perfect. Nobody's marriage is perfect. If they tell you the marriage is perfect, they lie in. Um, and we did have a lot of bumps in the road at the beginning of our marriage. We're, we're going to be married seven years come this November 11th. Yay! And we thank God, by the grace of God, ironed out a lot in the years before my son. Um, and honestly, there were kinks and bumps kind of still trying to linger in at the beginning of my pregnancy, but the minute we found out about my son's diagnosis, it was like all of that foolishness became secondary and we had to focus on what was important. And so it's like we came together and I'm so thankful for that being the response that he and I had. And um, since then in the next, you know, two years that have passed have become so much closer. Have we had bad moments? Yes but they have never been bad moments about my son. Thank you, God, because on that particular topic, we are 100% united. We are 100% um, supportive and helping each other. All right, you guys, that's it. Those are all the questions I have. Hopefully you got your questions answered. Um, like I said, if you have not seen the prior videos, go back and watch them. Feel free to share them with people. Even after October, even after Spina Bifida Awareness Month, I am so thankful for the comments that you have left, the fact that you're taking time to even watch these videos and share them with people and that you want to know more. I'm hoping that by doing this, one video view at a time, I make the world a more understanding and kind place for my son. So I thank you for that and I hope you have a good one and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.